How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? And welcome to a brand new episode of Strictly Nintendo, where we are going to take a look at the new 3DS XL. Now, before we move on, I do want to make it clear that I'm making the jump to the new 3DS XL from a DSi XL. So this review may be more helpful for those making a similar jump, or in cases where the new 3DS XL will be your first handheld console. So with that being said, let's dive in and see exactly what the new 3DS XL has to offer. Now the first thing I noticed about this console when I first held it was its weight. It's noticeably got a bit more heft to it than the DSi XL, but it's not like it's heavy or anything like that. It's just, to me, it translated into this thing's solid, it's built well, it's dependable, and, you know, physically speaking, I can rely on it. Now, the overall ergonomics of it, for the most part, I find to be really well done. There are some things that I don't like, but generally speaking, I find everything's easy to reach, easy to engage with, and very comfortable to play. Now, the analog stick or circle pad, whatever you prefer to call it, is actually very smooth and very accurate. It's got plenty of degrees of accuracy in there so you can make your character walk or run, and it's got a nice, consistent resistance across the board, so it's just very fluid, and I really enjoy playing with that. It does enhance the gameplay experience, and especially in games where you can switch between the two when you're controlling your character, it gives a nice new dimension to the gameplay. Now, the D-pad and all the buttons have a nice solid click to them, and they feel great to engage with while you're playing games. The shoulder buttons are easy to reach. The LZ and RZ, it's a little bit better to move your fingers up underneath the edges of your console and hit them with the pads of your index finger. It just feels much more naturally than trying to reach around the bumpers. I really love where the charger port and the headphone jack are at. It just makes sense to me. You know, it's like, if I'm playing and I have the console connected to the charger, I want that cable out of the way. With the placement of the port, the cable's out of the way. With the headphones, it's also out of the way because it's coming straight up the center, and I'm most likely using earbuds anyway. It just, great design choices in my opinion. And with the new 3DS, I like where the cartridge is placed. You know, it's offset. If I'm gaming, it's a whole lot simpler for me to do that and pull out the game, and it just makes more sense to me. I also like where the sliders for the volume and 3D feature are. It just feels comfortable to easily reach up with your fingers and adjust them however needed. So to me, that was a nice design choice. Now, what I don't like about it is I really don't care for where the power button is. However, this button is recessed enough and you have to hold it down. So you're not going to accidentally cut on and off your console easily. So, you know, I can live with it. It's, it's not an issue, you know. It's just something that I would have preferred it be back where I'm used to it being. The other thing I don't like is I don't like where the stylus is. It's just weird. You're not going to be playing and then easily reach up under there, grab it. It, it just doesn't seem intuitive, and I'm not going to game with the <laughs> stylus in my hand, you know, whereas with the DSi XL, it was right here, and that just made sense. It was a lot more intuitive to do this motion instead of doing this motion. But on the plus side, I do have the beard, so I can easily hold my stylus right there for easy access while gaming. Of course, there's also the cameras. You have the single interfacing one and the dual outer facing ones. And with the outer facing ones, you can shoot 3D viewable images, which is really nice. It's a cool feature. And, you know, they actually look better. You know, I mean, they're not the best cameras in the world, but they're definitely a step up from the DSi XL. And let's get into the screens now, because this is where I really like the XL over the standard 3DS. Now, personally, I like the larger screens. The smaller screens cause me to hold the console closer to my face, and that puts strain on my eyes. With the XL, the larger screens, I can hold it out a good foot and a half, I can see everything clearly, and I don't get eye fatigue. And these displays look good. They're detailed, the colors pop, and the brightness on it has a nice, crisp, bright output on it that you can, of course, adjust. So I get to see everything perfectly the way I want to. And the bottom screen, the one thing I've noticed about that is that it's much more responsive. Whether I'm using the stylus, the pad of my finger, or my fingernail, I find that it responds quicker and more accurately than it did on my DSi XL, so that's a nice step forward. Now the 3D feature is really cool. It looks great. Unfortunately, I can't show it to you in this video, but it's really nice. Now, even though I didn't own a 3DS, I did play one several times, and I did so 
in doing my research when I was first looking into getting a DSi or a 3DS. At the time, they only had the 3DS, not the XLs, so that was one deciding factor. The other was, I really didn't like the 3D. With this console, I like the 3D. There's an actual really good depth, at least from what I remember playing several years ago, this looks more detailed. It looks like it's more real. I don't know whether it's in the software or in the displays, but it does look like the game's world is extending out past the back of the console, like you're looking through a window into another world, and it's quite impressive. And with the new super stable 3D feature, it's something that you can enjoy consistently. Now, like myself, you may find that you have to go through the calibration setup a couple times or even go into the manual features and fine tune things, but once you get it set up properly, you're going to find the 3D imaging to be very impressive. Now, honestly, I'm pleasantly surprised with how well the 3D imaging stability actually works. Now, if you're sitting here gaming and you're moving your console around like this, you're going to have issues. It's not going to lock in place. You're going to see ghosting and everything like that. If you're playing and you do this, you're disengaging the face tracking. So when you come back, you may see some ghosting and it might take a split second for it to lock back into place. If you make turns like this, you might see a little bit of flickering while it adjusts, but overall, if you're playing like this and you're not making any significant movements, you know, minute movements like that, it's very stable and you get to enjoy that 3D feature, which does bring a whole new level to the gaming experience. And it's something that I definitely have enjoyed with the games that I've been playing. One thing that I am indifferent to is the micro SD card slot. Now, I understand why some people are frustrated that you have to remove two screws to take off the bottom plate and access that slot. However, for me, it's not much different than how my cell phone works, so honestly, I couldn't care less. I had a 32 gig card, so I just Ron Popilled it, set it, and forget it. Now, when I first got this console, I thought about doing a first impressions video, but first impressions can, in fact, be misleading. And the C Stick is a perfect example of that. At first, I didn't like it because it felt like you were rubbing on a hard eraser on a mechanical pencil or something like that. You know, there's no tactile feedback. You don't feel it moving around or anything like that. And, you know, for me, it seemed strange. But the more I used it and the more I started playing games that really utilize it properly, like Ironfall, which is a phenomenal game, by the way, you know, you start to warm up to it and you start to see just how useful it actually really is. And obviously, you know, with how compact the system is, you can't fit a secondary circle pad, analog stick, whatever. So it's a nice compromise, and I thoroughly enjoy the C-Stick itself. I think it's a brilliant design. Of course, there's the unified accounts with the Nintendo Network ID, so if you've friended me on the Wii U, you're going to be able to find me on my new 3DS XL. And if you're playing games like Mario Kart 7, Pokemon, and possibly in the near future, Animal Crossing New Leaf, we might just run across each other. And yes, I see a clear improvement in the processing power. The games in the system boot up faster. Everything seems to run more smoothly, as well as the internet surfs better. You know, this is a significant step forward for me, one that I'm glad I took. If you're coming from a DS or DSi, or even a 2DS, I definitely think there's advantages to going to the new 3DS, and I do highly recommend checking it out. Plus, it's backwards compatible with your DS, DSi, DSiWare games, as well as the entire 3DS current library. And there are going to be future games, obviously, that are going to take exclusive advantage of the improved processing power here. So there's a lot of value built into this console, as well as the built-in Amiibo support, which is just amazing because I really don't see any core Nintendo games coming out down the road that really won't utilize those. So a lot of advantages of going to a new 3DS. Now, if you're coming from an original 3DS, I can't say definitively whether it's going to be the right step for you, but I do believe that the 3D imaging has been improved and that the enhanced processing capabilities of this unit with the exclusive games are going to be an advantage. And hopefully I've given you enough information to decide whether the step from a 3DS to the new 3DS is worth it for you. And that will do it for this episode of Strictly Nintendo. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, rate, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care.